All right, what's going on, everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. So there are reports that came out very early this morning. I believe it originated from Reuters, so a credible, reputable uh, news outlet. And it states that Sony is in talks to buy the parent company of From Software, uh, which is Katakawa, if I'm pronouncing that right. Sony has a relationship with this parent company. They own some shares um, in Katakawa. Uh, we know they have a relationship with From Software because From Software um, is it co-developed co on Demon Souls and uh, Demon Souls and Bloodborne, right? Co-developed with Japan Studios. I think it will. It, I think it it is if I'm remembering correctly. Um. And obviously, we know they, from software, Katakawa, they're behind um, Elden Ring, Sekiro, Armored Core, Dark Souls, pretty much the entire Souls genre. So as of right now, um, so Sony owns Bloodborne. Um, they also own Demon Souls. Uh, Bandai Namco owns Dark Souls. Uh, and from software, they own the they own Elden Ring, obviously, uh, Sekiro, and Elden Ring. Yeah, I think they own all three of those. So the games that they've made, like the ownership, is kind of like spread out am amongst those because they've shown, which is probably fine to them because they've shown, like, listen, we you can have the ownership in some of our games because we're just going to make another banger souls ip which is like worked out well for them because they retain the ownership in their most popular game their most successful game which is elden ring right so obviously this since they're in talks this doesn't mean it's gonna happen because both sides have to agree to a lot of things and uh acquisitions take a lot of time so it's possible even though we're hearing about it now we don't know how long the talks have been happening um what stage it's at if it's really at any stage if it really has any traction so this could this could obviously not even happen um just to reiterate what my stance on acquisitions has has been um because there's a bunch of you know people out there who uh have different takes and i don't want to be lumped into their takes my stance on acquisitions has always been i'm okay with acquisitions as long as it's not publishers I just don't like to see publishers, entire publishers get acquired. And I don't think I have to explain the difference between the implications of a publisher being acquired versus a singular studio, right? It's like the difference between someone. It's like the difference between someone owning a state versus someone owning a city, right? Like if you own, if you some, somehow own or take over a city, I uh, like congratulations to you. You own this one city in this gigantic state. There's like 50 other cities in this one state, right? So the implications are much larger when you acquire a, uh, a publisher versus a, a just one studio, which I'm okay with in most circum circumstances. Like I said, even when it came to Bethesda, I was completely okay with Microsoft acquiring Bethesda because, as I said, and this is in, many, in all my other videos talking about acquisitions, I've always been consistent saying, listen, I, I was happy and I was good with Microsoft buying Bethesda because Bethesda was struggling. Their most recent games were selling very poorly. They seemed kind of strapped. I don't know if I'll say strapped for cash, but they weren't doing the best. So I'm okay if a if somebody comes and buys a studio, especially when they're like kind of struggling in a way. And I think like there there's some studio there's some studios right now that I think I need a publisher. And we talk about it, you know, a bunch of times on Weapon Wheel. Like Remedy, Remedy damn near be putting out GoFundMe's. Cause they always need more money. Like they're always Remedy is like very paycheck a very paycheck to paycheck studio and i hate that for them because i think they're a good developer but like every game they put out it's like literally just enough to like fund their next game damn damn near um platinum games is another one they just like have historically hoard themselves out with licensing games just to keep the studio afloat and they've even begged they've been like have a history of like begging someone to acquire them there's some studios that i'm absolutely good with and I think need to be acquired like all those 
singular studios that Microsoft acquired like back in 2016, 2017 before Bethesda, like Compulsion Games and uh, was it Double Fine and a few others. I'm, I'm cool with singular acquisitions. I don't think they're they're bad. And I think anybody who like says any of this stuff is bad in absolution is. You're a Sith. Only a Sith speaks in absolute. Um, because it's case by case. Some acquisitions are good. Some are bad. The only acquisition I was actually against was the micro was the uh, ABK deal because I just felt like that was absolutely egregious. And I'm like, there's there's I don't I didn't feel like anything good could come out of an, an acquisition that huge. And I feel like for the most part, I was right. But Bethesda and all that other shit, I was OK with. I, I don't have any problem with that. Um, now the conversation, some of the conversation I've seen is, uh, some people would be worried about if Sony got, um, from software in Katakawa because of some recent mishandling of studios, uh, which I can understand, but I, I think there is a little bit conflation there. The studios that have been mishandled and, um, closed down by Sony are main, mainly have to do with their, uh, multiplayer endeavors mainly regarding that if you look at the track record when it comes to games that focus on single player studios that focus on single player versus you know the recent multiplayer endeavor sony is 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 usually a good steward of games that focus on single player um but when it comes to the multiplayer that's where that's when the studios go awry and shit gets canceled and shit gets shut down because they're still trying to figure that part out but unless you think that they're going to turn uh, from software into some type of like multiplayer focused studio, I think I think this is a little bit different. And I, that's not something I would worry about just based on track record and evidence of what they've done. And they shut down some studios that are like small indie studios that don't make no money that nobody gives a fuck about. But I personally would not worry about Sony mishandling um from from software a multiplayer studio yes y'all y'all have that case even though i support their multiplayer efforts y'all have the case that yes they mishandle multiplayer studios and even like uh from what haven soft or whatever it's called and with fair games and bungie with uh fucking uh what's bungie marathon i even though i support it i completely understand people being completely skeptical and cynical about those but not i wouldn't worry about a if they actually got from software. Personally, me, no. Um, now, I'm bad at math. I tell y'all that all the time. I'm not the person. I don't track how much money these companies have. I don't track how much money they, I don't know their net profit and net revenue per year. And I don't look at the uh, the financial statements every quarter. It's just not my lane. I've never liked math my entire life. It's not my shit. I stick to what I'm good to. But I did ask, ask chat GPT because obviously it would be much better at math than me. Um, and of course, this is not 100% accurate because what chat GPT has to do is scour the Internet and find what information there is out there on on like Katakawa and its financials. And obviously, all of their financial information isn't out there. Only Katakawa absolute knows that and knows that 100%. But um chat gpt it it like found out uh the close range of like assumed it's assumed debt cash reserves enterprise value acquisition premium uh estimated acquisition costs market capitalization enterprise value uh a whole bunch of shit that sounds like I heard it in the one accounting class I took that I got that I barely passed. So I don't know what none of this fucking shit means. Straight up. I'll tell you, look, I'm not the math guy. I'm not the financial guy. I avoid it like the plague. There's a reason why I got a degree in communication and journalism, because I wanted to avoid anything that has to do has to do with math and numbers. But um, as I said, so I asked ChatGBT, give me the closest range of how much you know, based on all those things that that it found that it uh, looked up and researched, how much would it cost to acquire Katakawa? And the figure that ChatGPT gave me was three point six billion U.S. dollars. 
um, once again because From Software actually owns some shit and some valuable shit versus the irony of how much did PlayStation pay for Bungie, who owns one thing, which is Destiny? Granted, there was the bonus. The bonuses were like one point something billion. So I think the initial acquisition was like worth two point something billion. And then the bonuses to re retain that talent was like made it made it three billion. Let me just make sure. Sony. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, shit. Three point six billion. That's exactly what they bought. Bungie for the irony that that's exactly what. Chat GPT is is telling me that it would it would take to buy Katakawa the exact amount it it, it caught it cost to buy Bungie except uh from software and Katakawa actually owns some valuable shit and actually have a portfolio versus Bungie who owns one thing um crazy <clears throat> like I said uh I I I always I always bring up the fact that there's another um, studio that, if you wanted multiplayer expertise, Sony could have bought. There was like there was there's a few others. There was a few others you could have went to. All right, so I had to uh, after I finished my first video, I had to come back because apparently I didn't know this because y'all know I'm not really into anime like that. Um, Katakawa apparently has is a major player in the anime industry, and Sony is also i know they own like a bunch of um anime sites or uh distributors i guess i'm not informed about this whole anime thing like like y'all know i'm not an anime person very i'm very you know um casual when it comes to the whole anime game and the industry so that's all i really have to say about it so <clears throat> that's something i wasn't aware of there's some anime shit at stake here so it's not just about gaming and from software and, and and bloodborne and all the other shit they own this is there's some anime shit at stake here too so back to the original video now yeah so i don't know it like i said that's not an exact figure uh i don't know how much playstation has in the bank because you always see the conversation of people talking about oh sony can't afford this sony can't afford can't afford this and all that i don't know what I do know is when a lot of these acquisitions are made, they're not like cash. It's not like they literally send them, you know, like a cash app or, or, a de or an, uh, an actual, you know, cash deposit. A lot of this, sh this shit is like done through credit, like they borrow and, and shit. Like and these, these uh, entities can borrow a lot more money because they're an actual, you know, um, whole, whole billion whatever dollar company. So they can borrow a lot of a lot of money from a bank versus just like somebody like you or me. So they have the capability of borrowing if they want to acquire something like that. They may not have the cash on hand. Um, and obviously, this makes people think of Bloodborne because they're like, okay, well, is this what it takes to get a Bloodborne sequel? remake remaster whatever it is some type of bloodborne content maybe maybe <laughs> or maybe playstation acquires them and we still don't gonna get anything bloodborne because elden ring is the popular shit you know um selling 25 plus million where bloodborne capped out at uh, nine million from that leaked document. It, it, it capped out at eight, nine million, something like that. Uh, granted, you, you would think that the the boost that Elden Ring gave to you would think that Elden Ring would have gave a, a huge boost to to Souls games in general. That's what I originally thought when I saw like for, uh, Elden Ring sold all these copies. I was like, oh, this is great for the Souls genre, and I, I can't necessarily say that it's had the impact on the other souls games that um i thought it would i can't definitively say it's it's helped it ha obviously it hasn't hurt but i don't think the impact was as big as i thought it would be i thought like oh this was going to popularize the entire souls genre and i'm sure there's some people who like elden ring was their first souls games and it 
and it made them want to go play some other ones. But the success of Elden Ring had seemed to just stay specific kind of to Elden Ring and didn't like have that rising tide effect to the entire genre as much as I thought it would be. But but another Bloodborne would obviously sell uh, very well. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I always thought that Sony needed some, like another indie and double A studio, not more triple A. I've, I've said that because they need a studio. They need more studios, um, that can make a game in three, four years rather than five six years because these generations like we're getting to the point now where not only with play was with any play, playstation first party studios but there's different studios that listen y'all are on track to make one game in one generation which is insane there has that that has to be a solution has to be figured out for that right um because that's just crazy one game in one generation that's 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 not that's not okay um like i like i've proposed that listen maybe these generations need to be a little bit longer i would be okay with these generations being a little bit longer i i actually feel like i actually feel like these generations are being rushed a little bit like they're going by uh very quickly and it's not like previous generations where i felt like Oh, these these machines are just like extremely outdated and not viable, not viable for use anymore. Like I felt that with the PS3 really early. I'm like, yo, I feel like I'm using a goddamn typewriter or or a goddamn um, Windows PC from '95. It just felt really old and and dated really quick. Now with these like with the PS4, PS5, these current gen consoles, it's like, bro, you, I, could, I. Could, I think I could use this till like 2029, 2030, especially with the PS5, 5 Pro. Listen, I could go, I could probably go till like 2029 and, 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 be, and be okay. We'll still, we'll still using these. So I think to, I don't know, I, I think to give some of these developers more chance to get more than one game out, like we would have to extend the generation. But like a, either way, I think they need more studios like Team Asobi, who like who can make a game like Astrobot something in three to four years, and not something that takes five years. They need like an, another, in and they need a like. Listen, I've always said, uh, what you call it? The team that makes um, the team that that that's that's made Sifu, uh, Slow Clap. I'm like, listen, they should be on your radar because that's it. They made a game that. It's, it was probably very cheap to make and made a lot of money and is very popular. I, I would love to know the budget of Sifu. I'm just asking ChatGPT this just to see if it, it can figure it out. <clears throat> um, but yeah, it was very popular, very successful, very fun. I'm like, this is, it's, I feel like they're a special developer to, you know, just come up with that concept of it's com- it's almost like Blumhouse films where they make these horror films and like I think it was the owner's name Jason Blumhouse where he looks for people who can make scary movies on a low budget so like they he might give whoever like 5 million go make a scary movie and then the movie makes like 50 million it's crazy. Like he, they're just very profitable, and that's what I look like. What Sifu kind of does. That's the type of like indie double A developers you want. One that can um, make a cheap game, but it's a game that a lot of people want. So, but um, Sony is in the uh, Sony is clearly in the triple A space, and they've made that very clear. That's what they care about. That's what they want. The big bangers, which. I understand that's what PlayStation um, fans also kind of want. So they're catering to that. So, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I, th- I th- Like I said, that's what I w- would like them to do. But I'm not against this either. 
right? If if it was like a publisher, I would be against it. Single developer, like I said, it's 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 okay for me. Um, so let me know what y'all think about this. Hit the like button. Follow me on Twitter. All that good shit. I'll catch y'all on the next video. Peace.